patience and you can hear me Vitika? Yes, I can. And I can hear you. Okay, that means we're ready to rock and roll. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. I'm so excited because this guest is back for a third time. Talk about delivering. And it's so nice to see how many people know of her work, Vitika Kulhoff, that is, and also those who discovered her work through this show. We've had so many people write in comments after her show is live and as well as in the replay. So we're here to give you round three. And it feels like all the months between our shows, so much life happens. It's perfect to get caught up. And Vitika will also, after we get started and we're going to explore her because she's incredibly amazing and talented. And once we're deeply in with Vitika, we'll bring in Arjun, whom she channels. And Arjun is from the Yael. And so, ah, yes, very exciting indeed. So this show has been nominated for Two People's Choice Podcast Awards and Dare to Dream has been nominated for a Webby Award and most recently, Welp Magazine listed Dare to Dream as one of the top 20 podcasts that you must listen to this year. That was an awesome surprise. It only came about because I'm on Google Alerts and somebody sent it to me as well. And so, ta-da, we thank Welp Magazine so much for recognizing me, for the work the show does, for the amazing guests, and for amazing you, listeners and viewers, that you are along for this ride. I also wanna thank Access Consciousness and Dr. Dane here for sponsoring this show. They do beautiful energy work all around the world. You can become a facilitator, take a class, get their books. Go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R dot com, as well as accessconsciousness dot com. And I myself, Debbie Dashinger, I am a media visibility authority, and I teach entrepreneurs, speakers, and coaches how to write a highly engaging page turner book. I do that through private sessions, as well as through group sessions at debbiedashinger.com slash visible visionaries. I also take authors' books and fully done for them. I turn their books into a guaranteed international bestseller. And finally, I teach you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts, where the shows are, and how to be really powerful and impactful when you're being interviewed. So it's including the coaching. And for anybody who would like to have some free gifts around media and how you can start to implement your own visibility, I've got a series of videos and templates for you. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift, my gift to you to help you get your beautiful self out into the world. Well, again, my guest is Vita Kulhoff, who channels and works with Arjuna the Yael. And this episode is going to feature Vitika, who is an interstellar channel and shares a channel being from the planet Yael by the name of Arjun. Arjun functions as a bridge to information from the universe, interstellar cross connections, parallel lives, guides, and always the higher selves of clients. Sharing ET channeling, guided meditations, epic journeys, and self-reflective exercises, Vedika inspires people to reconnect with their own multidimensionality and to bring these experiences down to earth in a practical manner. Due to her own well-integrated and lifelong experiences with multidimensional contact, Vitika is able to offer high-quality interstellar channeling sessions for private sessions, many groups, and thousands of individuals from all over the world. You can learn more about her at designforawareness.com, and it's design, the number four, awareness.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Vitika Kohlhoff to Dare to Dream. Wow, you're back. Yay. Oh, yes, I'm here. Thank you, the amazing Debbie Dashinger, <laughs> for inviting me again and for, uh, well, always staying in touch. And we've been, yeah, continuing to connect uh, in such a playful way. I've been really, enjo really been enjoying it. And so thank you for this um, Again, invitation, three times a charm is what they say. So it's my honor. <laughs> you know, I thank you for saying that, Vitika. And I 
reflect back on when I first met you and you first came on the show and who I've become. And my gosh, you know, I was dipping my toe with a little bit of trepidation, a little bit of interest, with a lot of fear into the ET world. And today I'm like fully in it, fully fascinated, <laughs> open, and our relationship and where it's developed, you know, we know each other now way outside of this show. And I'm charmed by all of that. That makes me so excited, the transformation and possibilities of a human life in such a short span. It is incredible. And I meet more and more people that are, well, jumping on board of this train, so to speak, uh, with that same incredible mind blowing speed as you did. It's um, apparently something that is, um, well, co colloquially speaking, in the air. It's like a lot more people uh, in their already very active spiritual journey um, somehow suddenly, I wouldn't call it a coincidence, but you know, through synchronicity are being led to the interstellar um, subject or phenomenon in one way or another. And then they start diving in and then just everything accelerate, accelerates Mac Martin. That's what we call mm. Mac 10, like real, real fast. Um, and um, yeah, it looks like you are one of those people, but it's, it's spreading like oil on water, like real fast. I see it so much right now. Oh. And, and even in the, um, well, quote unquote mainstream or a little more in the mainstream, it's starting to become more of a topic. So it's definitely, um, cultivating momentum, it sounds like. <laughs> That's terrific. I think we're being prepared and that makes me happy. I want to mm -hmm. talk about your art because perhaps not everybody understands that you're also a very talented artist. You went to school for art. You paint in your free time. You have shown in exhibitions in Amsterdam. I want to start with what's new in your life with art. Um, well, I want to paint more, <laughs> so I'm opening up more time uh, to do that, and, um, but also to create an online workshop for people to learn how to channel for themselves. I'm looking into a lot of things, like new uh, pathways that I feel uh, mm -hmm. called into exploring deeper. Um, I did art school as an illustrator. I worked for newspapers, magazines. Um, when I wasn't channeling yet, so before that, and it kind of bridged from arts to life coaching in a creative manner, lifestyle coaching more so, and then into the channeling, which kind of took me off guard as well. Uh, and here we are, look where that, <laughs> look how that spun out of control. <laughs> but I'm still absolutely loving this journey. Um, and the art has always remained present in the background. I just love doing creative things and, you know, playing around a little bit and yeah, most of it is for me at the moment. It's my way of channeling, you know, um, you know, in my free time, just, it's like a meditation. I think other people that paint or draw probably know that that mental peace that comes with being completely absorbed in creation in that way. But I think the same thing can come from loving interior architecture and changing your living room around or gardening or, those kind of things. I love to work with my hands to do something that moves matter in a sense. So in that way, I think I've always been a creator, a very artistic, uh, artistically oriented person. Um, but I love it all, all of it. Like, <laughs> honestly, when somebody did grocery shopping, so they're like, how do we best put everything in a bag? I'm like, yay, this is a fun physical challenge. <laughs> and <laughs> You bring in a mental awareness of, of proportions of space, you know, and time. You kind of like play with the blocks, the building blocks of life. And um, I kind of love all of that. It's just the whole, it's just how you look at the world. You can make that your painting too. So I love just being present and looking at life with that type of consciousness. That's mm. constantly ongoing thing in the background for me. I recently looked at your art on the Saatchi art website. Ah. And yeah, that was fun, you know, to be able to scroll through and just see all, many of your creations. I know it's not all. The eyes of your characters are really whimsical. 
and these giant liquid kind of eyes. So beautiful, perhaps not of this earth. So I'm curious, are they cartoon-like and your interpretation, or is your artwork channeled and beings from another planet? I think in many ways, art is channeled in general by people. We, we of course, create through our own filters of understanding. And I did, of course, do, do illustrative arts. So cartoon isn't that far-fetched. There is a little bit of turning it into more abstract there, definitely. And playful. I also did children's books. So it's kind of a blend between what you would understand perhaps a real person to look like and what you would let them look like in a children's book. Um, but the eyes, that's funny that you mentioned, especially the eyes. That's something I just dive in and I kind of lose myself in the eyes in the painting or the drawing of the eyes as you might lose yourself in the eyes of a lover. And it's that different zone, you know, where there's always something magical about the eyes. I think we all know that. <laughs> That's why people, if they do eye gazing for the first time, they can get all uncomfortable or incredibly emotional. It's a really crazy thing. How much power there is in having real eye contact. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about sacred geometry? What kind of role or importance does sacred geometry play in your life? I love it in an aesthetic manner, I guess. I like to play around with that as well, but not as much as some people. Like, it's not like it needs to be in all my artworks or anything like that. My works are more following the wiggly lines. It doesn't necessarily have to follow the Fibonacci code or spiral or anything like that. But when another person does, I adore it. And I love paintings that are more abstract and that are just built on these fundaments and, and I'm more um, an enjoyer of that kind of art than a, a creator of that kind of art, even though I see it is everywhere. When I look at a flower bloom, when I look at, you know, your cauliflower, when, you, when you're cutting vegetables, or, I don't know if you have that, but when you're in the kitchen and you're making your dinner or your lunch or whatever, and you cut something in half, I'm always like eager to look inside how this one is organized. And that's a way of enjoying sacred geometry because it's right there. <laughs> is there a connection between multidimensionality, sacred geometry and crystals? Um, I guess I'm not a hundred. Well, I don't know. That's more question for our June, I guess. Mm. Um, there might be. OK, from the top of my head, I would say Okay, what I know from Arjun, he has explained previously that the crystals are kind of like the fundamental building blocks of life or our dimensional reality. Uh, so that's crystal, crystalline structures are sacred geometry. They are, they reflect that. And then you said a connection with multidimensional. Yeah. Multidimensionality, uh, sacred geometry and crystals. I think so, yes. And now I am uh, pulling from previous channelings. Um, I believe that the highest energy frequency, if you look at it as a circle, so you have crystals, if you would say, you, you draw a dot somewhere on the circle and you say, this is where we begin <laughs> building physical reality. And then that's where crystals come in. And obviously there is a whole extension of building it all around the circle, becoming more sophisticated, more refined, uh, more, layered levels of expressions of consciousness uh, all the way to how humans, how our minds work and dolphins and whales and all of that. And then you come full circle. So what's below the crystal, right? What's there? What's the highest level of this creation that then meets the starting point, so to speak? Um, and I think that's where um, physical um, weaves into the non-physical it's it's the absolute most high it's where water begins to vaporize into steam so it's that you know uh dusk dawn in between states where the energies are so high that it turns into a different realm so to speak and i think crystals therefore this is what i understand from arjun are such great translators of that. So if you take a crystal to a healing, and of course it's a permission slip, it's just a tool. 
But if you take it with the intent, and your intent is a non-physical thing too, it's a high vibrational thing, your intention. So if you imprint your intent on the crystal, which is very open to absorb such type of energies, it can freely do that. There's no filters, no obstructions. It's the basic fundament of our reality. So it will just you know, encapsulate within itself that message, which is why I understand clear quartz is so excellent for radio. You know, they used to use them in radios in the very beginning stages of, those, of this technology because they, they'll just, you know, pick up um, on any bandwidth. You know, yeah, you broadcasts. Just... I, under, I believe yes. it is rose quartz that uh, yeah. radio oh, okay. stations used to use. Yeah, okay. I, uh, yeah, rose quartz, clear quartz, one of those or both, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but they're perfect for just being the transmitter and the receiver. Mm -hmm. So they're open. There's no, there's no, you know, obstructions there to do that with. So if you have a good intent or you put an intent into a crystal, quote unquote, into it, it's all in your consciousness, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but you use it as a tool and then you take it to an event. You kind of use it as an anchor point or you can put it next to your bed and it will be like the anchor point of that intention in mm -hmm. physical form, represented in physical form. So they meet on the circle of the circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> you have that, that songs just jump into your head. <laughs> Where's our crystals? This would be a beautiful moment, right? Oh my God. That's so perfect. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now we've got our theme song to go with it. Exactly. That's cool. I thank you for bringing that up. That is a, a great reminder of something I haven't done. I've got amazing crystals and I use them more for their properties. Like, okay, this one protects, this one is energizing. Mm. This one is good for promoting love. This one is you know, good for your body. They're, they're all fantastic. But to understand the basic principle, we start with quartz or rose quartz is that it's a giver and receiver that it can embody what it is we want to create. And then, mm -hmm put that out into the world. And um, yeah, so I'm going to start playing with that more in my intentions and meditations. It's a great mm -hmm. reminder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think these kind of things flow into our conscious awareness whenever they may be relevant again, and then out of it when they're less, because obviously nothing is really depending on it. But I do feel that when we feel drawn to something, the the energy feeling of feeling drawn to something onto itself reveals to us there's something there. And obviously we have chosen to be focused in a physical world. So whatever we feel drawn to is the high vibration of enthusiasm. And it reveals to us through which means or permission slips, we may potentially um, increase chances of getting to know ourselves better by. So it's all, you know, just stepping stones along the way of remembering that eventually we already contain all of that information, obviously. Mm. But that's the journey we're making, right? To remember it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I recently became really attracted to pyrite. And if anyone can see, I'm wearing a big chunk of pyrite. I have a pyrite tower, a couple of pieces now. And it just was very recent. And funny enough, concurrently, I was having a reading with somebody and she was just sending me the recording. And that was the thing she mentioned is you need pyrite. Like pyrite will be so beautiful for where you are right now and your personality is like, yeah, I guess I got that download. So thank you for that confirmation. And I do love it. I really That's resonate. Great. And you, my dear, I hope it's okay to bring this up, but you're, you started something recently, which is aerial yoga. I uh -huh, find yeah. amazing. <laughs> what, tell people what that is and, and how are you doing with that? Uh, oh, it's such a nice addition to my life. I mean, I'm already a yoga addict by choice and I love it. So every day I do yoga. It's, it's before I even have breakfast. It's my thing in the morning. I do yoga. Um, anywhere in between probably 15 minutes and an hour, maybe even an hour and 15 minutes. That's kind of like the time frames. And, and now I'm, I'm swapping it around. Like the one time I'll do the normal yoga on the ground. <laughs> and then the other time I'll do the aerial yoga. So I had a person 
professionally insert, I, I, yeah, safety first, safety before anything. If you're going to try this, be safe. It's, it's something that comes with a few, you know, heads up uh, notes there. Uh, I had somebody install, um, you know, hooks in the ceiling of my uh, living room. And um, it's like a hammock. It's called an aerial yoga hammock. And you can Google to have an idea of what that looks like. And it's like a hammock, but you just hang it real close. It's kind of, the loop is like a little uh, horseshoe. And um, it's, well, you can put it on different heights uh, according to what type of uh, yoga sequence you want to do with it. And the idea is that you can hang in it upside down. You can do all kinds of tricks in it. And some people turn it into an entire choreography dance journey. Uh, I found a really nice teacher on uh, YouTube that does incredibly beautiful uh, guided yoga classes uh, for aerial yoga. So I'm learning and I'm having fun with it. And it's just an interesting experience to be upside down every day for a little moment <laughs> to see life from the other side around. Um, yeah, but I feel it's it's good. It's a great way to uh, un. I don't know if this is the right word to untense your spine to take the the um, tension off your spine because well, how many times are you naturally upside down like that? It's not really in our day to day lives, but it's a great way if you if you decompress. That's the word to decompress mm -hmm. your spine. That's what it does, amongst others. Uh, but if you get dizzy easily, uh, or if you have low blood pressure, as I actually do, you do have to be a little bit careful getting in and out of these states. So it's good to either take professional classes, or if you're experienced with yoga, to follow a good, you know, good guidelines. Find some tricks to get in and out of the hammock. <laughs> yeah, I hope we'll be privy to some pictures at some point, because I would love to see ah! People are asking for this. I'm still a little bit too shy, but uh, in time, I'm sure I will be confident enough to share something. <laughs> okay, we can wait patiently. I want to bring something up. We're going to bring on Arjun. And you said something to me before we started the show that I thought was so interesting. We were talking about how when our June comes in, it is done through a meditation. And of course, for everybody watching or listening, if you're in a position to close your eyes, this is an exquisite meditation that will put you in a different state and uh, highly recommended. So when we were talking about that state and I was mentioning how it makes me feel coming out of it to reconnect with you, with Arjun, um, and carry on conversation. It's like I am in this very, very, very expanded space, and I have to bring, in a sense, my particles together to <laughs> talk, and uh, happy to do so. But that's how powerful I find the meditation. And you said, as Vedika, that in the meditation, for folks who are very much into the ET cross connections, and people who also enjoy traveling along, it can be really profound. And I just want to talk about that for a minute. Like, what's that like for you? And what do you know that that, that happens for us as we follow and enjoy the meditation? Good question. And thank you for asking. Um, so I think obviously everybody is unique. So for some people, this may be impressive and for others, it may just be <laughs> not impressive at all. Um, but for me, it helps me um, create a space in my head uh, that is super open and receptive to, well, Arjun's frequency so that we can connect in a very effortless manner. He has explained to me that this particular idea, so what we will do, we will do it in a little bit anyway, so people can join. Um, um, what we will do is mentally travel with your imagination. You travel to the center of the earth, you travel to your heart, and in that moment, what Arjuna has explained to me is you make a very strong earth connection and you connect it to your heart because your heart is pretty much also as a symbol, but also in a literal way, uh, you know, the vortex of your being. Uh, and so you connect yourself to the earth consciously and you create an anchor. It's also a state wherein you 
choose to embrace that you're incarnated on earth. You say, I'm on this planet. That's okay. I'm going to love this. I'm going to connect it to my heart. I am here. It's this I am state that you're underlining by traveling to the center of the earth in that way. And then I will invite people who want to join to uh, mentally travel to the sun, which is a star, obviously, in our solar system. Um, and well, it could be the sun. It could be a different star. It could be the moon. You know, it could be something out of the earth, but they're deliberately choosing the sun as it has a particular gateway function to our planet that supports these transmissions. Sun energy, Arcturian energy are also interconnected, are related, and Arcturian energy is something that is heavily supporting also the um, uh, connection that is being made with the IL. So the species that Arjun is a member of. So it's all coming together. And then we allow that into our hearts because you travel back from the sun connection to your heart. And after you've grounded yourself by connecting to the earth in your imagination, you can allow in a lot more interstellar energy than when you skip that part. So what I understand is that anchoring and grounding is crucial in your life, in general also. So this is this would just be a symbol, but in general, it's crucial for you to allow in more higher vibrational information. So when you're more steadily grounded and you're being more centered, when you're not in resistance to the fact that you have chosen, maybe subconsciously, maybe not, you know, aware <laughs> uh, to be on, a, on earth in this lifetime journey, then paradoxically, you act actually allow in much more um, effortlessly the interstellar information that is always being offered to us. It's just a matter of are we allowing it in or not? Because we all have a soul connection. We are all, like in some songs, made of stardust. We are really that. It's, it's quite <laughs> literally the case. But to energetically feel it is a different thing. And I think this meditation for some people, and then especially those that are open to receive it, it can be a nice trampoline to really feel that. It can be a physical experience. Like you said, you have to pull yourself back together to even be able to speak again. And that's what it did for me when I just started channeling. If I would connect with Arjun in the beginning stages of this journey, I can... Who wants to open up their mouth? You're in this zone. Who wants to even <laughs> make a sound when you're feeling that high on bliss and unconditional love? Because that's kind of what comes with their energy for me. So I also had to learn, like you said, to kind of, you know, okay, stay present. Stay present. You're still going to have to be able to vocalize some words here. So it's a, it's a continuous balance of allowing it to flow through me and then um, putting it into the words that through my belief system, I feel come closest to the concepts that's, that they are offering to us during a transmission like that. Mm -hmm. There's always the filter of the translator. There's no way around it. All channelers contain filters or you wouldn't be speaking to a translation because that is what it is. It's a telempathic connection um they don't actually use a language like we do they don't speak english uh or german or dutch <laughs> it's just that when they connect to you you'll receive it in the language that is most effortless for you to receive it in and if you happen to be bilingual or if you speak different languages then you may be capable of translating it in other languages as well as i'm doing now with when I channel in English and I speak some German and I speak some French, mm -hmm. but with the energy frequencies of the Yael uh, connecting and flowing through me, I'm not strong enough in these languages to do a proper translation. It's, it has to be more solid than that. And English comes more natural for me. I read books in English and so on. Mm -hmm. So I can keep it together enough to actually speak in English as well. Um, besides Dutch. And who is Arjun actually? Is Arjun a contact specialist? Does he have a job? Is he a he? <laughs> All of that? He is a he. They do have a gender in that sense, or, you know, <laughs> you, you could see a difference, like with us, uh, men and women in that way. 
um, uh, he has let us know that they do experience themselves as physical, but it is in such so much higher energy frequency dimension that where we are right now, we would experience them as non-physical or transparent, kind of semi-physical, semi but they can lower their energy frequency to the degree where we could touch, but that's quite an effort on their side right now, but it's possible. And we're rising or raising our frequency. So we may evolve to a moment in space and time, linearly speaking, where we can actually meet in a shared physical dimensional realm. So uh, does he have a job? He is a contact specialist. Um, he has experience with connecting to multiple quote unquote new worlds seen from their perspective. Now they know about our world. I mean, they're genetically related to us. So they, <laughs> our world was always in the, um, you know, in their consciousness. <clears throat> but still to connect with us now, where we are now and where they are in their evolution, uh, it is sometimes almost experienced as connecting with a new world because we have such an other way of looking at life mm. that they're really learning how to communicate with us better. And what might be of service in potential future scenarios of disclosure and open contact. So you could call it, they're studying us in a way, um, but also I feel very much, there is a very fond and loving and warm friendship. Uh, there's no insistence on their side that we do anything with this. There is no telling us what to do or how to behave. It is a true unconditional love as I understand it. Um, yeah. I think that's that's it in a nutshell. Well, yeah, there are extra dimensional or what we would understand, what most people would call extraterrestrial. Beautiful. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, with that, <laughs> if you are ready, mm -hmm. I am ready to receive our June. And folks, right. again, if you are in a position like you're not driving kind of thing or working exactly with machinery. Or working with a machine, exactly. <laughs> Put down the saw. <laughs> <laughs> Put down Thor's hammer and just be present because this is quite beautiful. All right. Well, for anybody who uh, feels they are able to join in this, you're so welcome and um, have fun with it. And I'll see you later also, Debbie. <laughs> So to start on that little journey, I would ask you to begin by taking a nice few deep breaths in and out. And with every out breath, allow yourself to fully let go of all the tension that might still be in your body or in your mind at this moment. And gently bring your awareness to your heart, if you like. And imagine how from your heart, a silver line of energy begins to flow down through your body, down through your belly, down through your legs, all the way down to your feet, through the soles of your feet and into the ground. And imagine that silver line sinking deeper and deeper, moving effortlessly through all the layers of the earth until eventually you reach the center of the earth, the heart of the planet. And whatever this looks like to you right now in your imagination, it is absolutely perfect. And you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to this place in a way that feels natural and logical to you right now. When you feel that you have in your very own way made that connection, imagine that earth energy then flowing through your silver line, traveling back up, same way you came through all the layers of the earth yet again, returning to the building that you're in, and imagine that earth energy then flowing into your body, starting at the soles of your feet, moving through your feet, 
up your legs to your knees, while along the way, every single cell gets embraced by that earth energy. From your knees to your hips, every cell begins to resonate in harmony. Through your belly, your lower back, up along the spine and into your chest. And with the next deep and calm breath in, imagine that earth energy then flowing into your heart and filling it up completely. And then if you wish, imagine that same silver line from your heart now going on a second journey, this time moving upward from your heart, through your throat, through your head, out through the crown chakra, through the building and into the sky. And higher and higher, beyond the clouds, beyond the ozone layer, and into the universe, your silver line flies effortlessly, this time amongst the planets and the stars, until eventually you reach the central sun of your solar system. And here too, you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to the center point of the sun, however you imagine you would like to do that right now. When you feel that you have in your own way also made that connection, imagine then that solar energy too, flowing through your silver line, traveling back across the universe, returning to your blue little magical planet that you call Earth, returning to the continent, the country, the region, the building, and eventually room that you're now choosing to be focused in. And then imagine, if you will, that solar energy too, flowing into your body, starting very gently at the top of your head, moving through your head, through your neck, back and front, into your chest, between and around the shoulder blades, like a blanket of love wrapping around you. And with the next deep and calm breath in, imagine that solar energy too then flowing into your heart and merging with the earth energy frequency there in a never ending golden spiral. And if you wish, you can put one or both of your hands on your heart for a moment to anchor there, to land there. For this is where heaven meets earth within you. It is the door through which we speak, the window through which we see at this moment of your time. For dear friends, we are here and we thank you for the invitation of the co-creation of this here and now. Now, how are you and how can we be of service? Oh, thank you so much. That was so beautiful. Huh. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Just, yeah. Ah, uh, so I would like to start out, Arjun, and thank you for being here so much. So I would welcome. like, yeah, thank you. And, and tell me please more about you and where you're from. Are you even, I understand based on what Vidika just shared, your thinking and processing the Yael's versus the beings on earth so incredibly different. Is there a place in your existence where you're remotely similar? And I'll just throw out some things. You may think of other things. Do you eat and drink? Do you wash your hair? Do you have hair? Do you fall in love? Do you fall out of love? Do you like to exercise? Do you have careers of passion or enjoy culture? Things like that. All right. All right, so the first one that pops up for us from that little list, do we fall in love? All the time we do. Do we fall out of love? No. And that would be a difference between us and your culture, perhaps, or how you're choosing to experience it at this moment. But you have at your capability also that possibility. You can choose to fall in love and not out of it, so to speak, as you would put it in your language. We have hair, we would, might, wash it now and then, yes. There is interaction with nature. We can, in that sense, take a shower under a, you could say, waterfall or in a space that has been created, not so much as your bathrooms, but in a way similar where play with water takes place. For us, all professions are based on passion. Mm -hmm. So whatever we choose to endeavor upon, whatever curiosity arises in us, it is from passion, curiosity, 
interest, excitement, and we take action upon that. What else was there in your list? You had such a fun. Eat and drink, exercise, enjoy right, culture. Yes. Exercise, not so much in the way you do in order to gain a certain appearance, but we move a lot. We love to move. We love our, in that way, physicality. We eat and drink if we choose to. We do not have to. Nothing is depending on it. There are those that do not eat nor drink their entire lives. We can live of what you would understand perhaps in your language to be prana. We can take, quote unquote, or absorb energy from the field, from the all that is, and live on that. That is what fundamentally sustains us. But you could also say that if we are curious to taste something, we can. And there are those that have made it their passion to come up with all kinds of interesting recipes and share them with others. It just all synchronistically unfolds in such a manner that those that are resonating on the bandwidth of a similar interest automatically find each other. And so there is the constant sharing of love, passion, curiosity, and so forth, creativity in many playful ways in our world. This question comes up as I hear you share all of that, especially understanding that your world is based on this unconditional love. And clearly ours right now is not. And yeah, this is twofold. So the well, first part, yes, please. Well, yours is, you're just pretending that it isn't. Mm, say more. Everything is carried by unconditional love. It is the energy frequency that lies at the fundament of creation. It is non-judgmental. It is there for you. It is. Existence is. Unconditional love is what would be the most fitting word in your vocabulary to give expression to that vibration that holds it all, quote unquote, together. But within that, since you have free will, you can pretend that what you observe is not held by love. You can choose to, in a sense, forget that and play a different ball game. But the ball game is still being held by unconditional love eventually. I've noticed that people tend, not everybody, but many, most people on earth tend to operate in this interesting duality that there's a lot of people who will talk about infinite love and unconditional love, and they will show that to strangers or people they've just met. And yet in the intimacy of their primary relationship, that they are not often unconditionally loving. And then this conversely can be like that, that there are people who in the intimacy of their home or friends or tribe can show that great love and consideration and yet with strangers, not at all. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of discrepancy there. And is there a way with folks like that where it's so the equilibrium is off and instead it could be flowing both ways and all ways is there something they can do, think, be that will supersede that and instead create the unconditional love we're talking about? Oh, good question and thank you. So first of all, it might assist these individuals in their journey and for anyone who is observing their journey from the sideline, so to speak, to understand or at least attempt to understand why someone might choose choose to differentiate in the gifting of their unconditional love in such a specific manner. So to come back to one of the examples you just gave, they may be very open to 
quote unquote strangers and not so much when it comes down to it in their private relationships. And that person may have adopted in the course of their lifetime or what they understand to be their own personal history, the belief system or a set of beliefs that tell them that it is all right to be very open in superficial relationships and they feel safe there to show themselves as they really are, so to speak. And that when a relationship becomes intimate, they need to shield themselves because particularly when a person comes that close, they may get hurt. So there can be in their set of beliefs, the idea that superficial relationships are more friendly to be explored in a wholehearted way as long as they don't take too long or go too deep, you see. And then when something goes to that level, the shields come up. But it comes down to their personal belief, their private beliefs, the um, definitions they have consciously or subconsciously written into their way of looking at the world. And to explore that deeper within oneself helps a person to get to know themselves better. And that will then open up the door and the possibility for them to rewrite such definitions if they wish to. Mm. And you as an observer can choose to see them beyond the potential obstacles that they might be encountering on that journey. Just by seeing them beyond it, by remembering, you can do that for another person, quote unquote, which what you would often call holding the space for someone or for something by remembering that on a soul level, they never trapped themselves in these type of ideas. They're not trapped. It's just the ego mind that is playing the game of being trapped in these ideas and definitions. But as soon as more consciousness comes in, more love can come in. And with more consciousness, freedom expands in their experiential reality automatically. We're in interesting times here. You might, as a contact specialist, agree that the earth is a bit at a crossroads and two choices. Never a boring moment. <laughs> Absolutely. And for the, those of us who are extremely aware of the possibilities, both uh, one we wouldn't want to create, but it looks like we're headed to, and another that has the possibility of the beautiful things we're talking about and the ways that the Yael's currently live. So is there something we don't know that right now could change everything for the better, that could literally turn things around, maybe wouldn't include that much effort, but is something we could do individually and globally so we could have a beautiful result for Gaia, Mother Earth, and really honor her and treasure her, and also for ourselves to treasure each other and humanity and create an outcome that would be mind-blowing in the best possible way, really, truly peace on Earth and goodwill towards us all. All right. Well, the most compact answer to that would be the formula that we have shared many times before, to live your highest excitement to act on your highest excitement to the best of your ability until you can take it no further, no pushing, no pulling in any given moment without any insistence as to where that ought to lead to. So as you just asked the question, you said, what can we do that may then lead us to dot, 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 that would be your pitfall. Don't expect where it needs to lead you. Whatever you're doing, follow your heart, follow your inner knowing, your inner being. Allow yourself to, in that sense, get to know yourself better. Like we said in the previous answer, answer, the other question that you asked about why do people differentiate with their expressions of love in these types of manners? It's all a matter of getting to know yourself better. So when you follow your highest excitement, which is literally the energy frequency in the physical of, you could say, your core energy, your soul, better said, even more fine-tuned rather than the word of excitement, we may use enthusiasm. The word enthusiasm is derived from the Latin end 
includes the word theo, which means God. Enthusiasm is God flowing through you. It is the God spark flowing through your body. If you know what enthusiasm feels like, then you understand that it is a God frequency. It is what guides you into the direction of that, which holds the potential to allow you to get to know yourself even better, to expand spiritually. Even if your enthusiasm leads you upon a specific journey that doesn't lead to the outcome that your rational mind had in mind for you, then perhaps by being quote unquote forced or led to the idea of what you might call disappointment, if you choose to label it that way, in fact, may hold the exact key of information or transformation or integration that you on a soul level were longing to embrace in this physical oriented life. When you are faced with a challenge, there is a gift hiding in it always. So when you're looking at your world today, we would remind you most of all, what you put in is what you get back. So if you choose to label the circumstances that are playing out on the stage of your world right now as negative, then you will see proof of it being just that. And if you label it as positive, or at least holding the capability for mankind to learn from, or to evolve from, or to hold space for the entire scenario in your heart, and imagine, with the force of your, you could say, 24 seven connection to spirit, imagine through your own excitement and creation spark, a scenario that might come out of this that even though very unexpected may benefit all involved. When you do things like that, you will see proof and you will begin to see more and more reflections around you of scenarios changing what you would call for the better. You may see it starts small first, but every change is a total change. So a positive mindset, even though it may seem absolutely absurd in the light of certain things playing out on your world today, for some people who choose to look at that as absurd, if you choose to nourish and cradle in yourself a positive mindset in general, you may see that around you, even though politics doesn't get resolved the next day, for instance, but that around you, certain people that you know and that you knew to be quite rigid in their thinking get a little bit more loose or open up to a new passion or say something kind to you that you really didn't expect they ever would or come from an angle of understanding or even just curiosity and questioning that previously they were absolutely not open to explore. And in those tiny little steps, the universe is shifting. There's great quantum leaps being made for those who understand and recognize the power that is being held by such seemingly small previews of the new paradigm that we understand you are all from a heart level reaching for. Oh, such a good answer and such a good reminder. I've always said the one thing I've done correctly in my life is follow energy. I mean, it's created my life. And that's simple. That's um, not an effort to identify an excitement or enthusiasm, as you said, with the Theo in it, the connection yes. to God, yeah. that yes, I have found things that didn't even have to matter if it made sense. I would just say, well, that looks really amazing and interesting. And I feel this good feeling in my, my stomach and I'm going to do that. And it, it never was the thing, but it kept leading me to the next right thing. And it was sort of like skiing <laughs> back and forth in my life. Um, and it's created magnificent things. And I love, because that's exactly what I asked you for, effortless. That's effortless. That is something we can each do. Yes, exactly. And, I can feel as you're saying that that creates joy. That's like hunting for joy. And yes. when there's that level of joy, I think it's much easier to be kind to each other and more. Um, yes, that will then 
that will then become effortless too, because it will be naturally flowing from you to be that way, because you look at your own life with that same type of kindness. Mm. When you're skiing, as you say, down the slope and you're zigzagging and it looks as if you're not going straight for the target that you may have in mind, the zigzags build your resilience. Mm. It shows you this little alley needs to be taken this little path needs to be explored and you will get something from that that will help you you could say expand the toolkit that you will need when you come there and there later down the path but you don't know that yet but isn't it wonderful and lush to have these surprises every single time around the corner and you can judge that negatively or you can look at that as exciting up to mm. you whatever you choose to label it as you will see more reflections of and that will then create in your version of reality to prove that it is so beautiful you mentioned that you're not physical right but you could with effort create that if we wanted to touch is the same true for your spacecraft are there sightings and for those of us who love contact work how would we know it was a yayel craft what distinguishes it all right. Well, first of all, to the first part of your question, we consider ourselves physical. It's just in a higher energy vibrational bandwidth than you are oriented in. So in other words, let's see if we can make this a little bundle of mind bent for you to play with. Thinking of the idea that everything is here and now, which it is, why are you not running into your future self? Just assuming that you'll be around tomorrow, why is that, Debbie, in this case, not running around through your house, walking from the kitchen to the living room and so forth? Why can't you run into her? Because she, even though she already exists, those versions of you already exist in the bigger scheme of time and space, as you're playing it out linearly, she's on a higher vibrational bandwidth. Hmm. We're in your future. We're in a higher vibrational bandwidth. That doesn't make us non-physical to us. We are physical. We're non-physical to you from your perspective in the time-space reality as you're choosing to have it crystallize into your awareness. Now we can, as you just said, bridge, we could say, the seeming linear gap between our time-space experience and your own and crystallize ourselves in a more tangible manner for you to observe us or even have physical contact that will ask of you though a raising of your energy frequency so that we can meet in what you might call perhaps a kind of bubble reality that is slightly separate from the overall focus point of your planet in these days so to speak so when you have an encounter say you have an encounter with one of us and it would be in the physical one of us say just an example materializes in the middle of your living room to shake your hand or say hi yeah. and then the shaking of hands would be us adjusting to your customs not the other way around but we could do that and if that would happen or if somebody would have that type of experience it would be perceived by them in a bubble reality. And we wouldn't be their full force, say, to the full condensation of the energy frequency that we have, because usually that will cause a kind of short circuiting in your brain. So it's a very, very, very small amount of people on your planet today that can actually stand us, wink, in a positive way in that close proximity majority of you are and we don't mean that in a denigrating manner at all but you're not ready for that yet so mm -hmm. what you would see more often is the ships now there is no way that we can guarantee that when you see a specific ship that it is ours because there are more species mm -hmm. that fly navigate use the idea of similar looking ships mm. but one very commonly used what you might understand to be a scout ship are triangular craft rounded edges smooth surface we may choose to show it black with three lights mm. on each corner potentially an additional light in the center depending on circumstances and why and how we choose to communicate with the observers. There 
may also be an appearance of the entire triangular showing as, as one light, one bright glowing triangle. In that sense, we can have the ship appear transparent to you so that you could see in a night sky, for instance, the stars through it and behind it, you would say. It can look many ways. We can warp it in different, you could say, manners that have it appear differently to you from the physical, visual perspective that you have through the physical senses. And then also you might be standing right next to a person uh-huh. whilst you have a sighting like that and they may not be able to see it. Right. You see it, you're pointing it out and they don't see it because you're in a high enough state of awareness to actually pick up on it and they may not be. Also the communication in that moment may not be relevant for them. Realize if you will, that we are aware of those that spot us, so to speak that there is no coincidence in that, that in most occasions, people that have sightings are communicating in one way or another to a simultaneous parallel incarnation of themselves to a extension of their own oversoul that is future or past, however you wish to identify it. So in other words, another version of them from a higher point of view is communicating and cross-connecting and looping back to the version of reality that you your spin-off from the oversoul is currently choosing to be focused in. You're often doing this, even in your dream state, in order to allow in more information from the greater self that is all you, so that you can apply that in your day-to-day life. It is just a more increasing phenomena now that people may consciously, so in a waking state, what you call your waking state, have such downloads and interactions and having a sighting is one of those ways, is one way wherein that could manifest for you, mm. if relevant. My God, that was an exciting answer. Was oh, awesome. thank you. <laughs> you know, I had this happen in my very first spacecraft sighting where we had been doing contact work out in Joshua Tree Desert. And uh, right. nothing happened, but it was a beautiful evening. And on the drive home on the freeway, sure enough, hanging in the middle of the sky, a giant craft, no propulsion noise, nothing, and mind blowing. And um, we couldn't get off the freeway fast enough to take the pictures and the videos. And yet, not one other car or truck slowed down. Nobody else seemed to see it, which was mystifying and exciting all at once. And only we saw the spacecraft and we captured it too. Oh, beautiful. So yeah, this is exactly what we mean by one person may see it and right next to them, somebody else may not. Mm -hmm. And like you said, soundless, our ships are too. There is absolutely no sound. You may though, for some individuals, experience the sensation of a hum a low hum or a high pitch whistle like like that Mm. but that sound will then more originate from inside of you than outside of you because for some people the calibration with the energy frequency of the ship and or their future selves that are then being offered to them in their physical reality may take some adjusting and that may translate as these type of sensations, which also some people experience at the cutting edge of falling asleep or waking up. But when they when they feel themselves shift from one dimensional reality into another. It may be accompanied by a humming sound or a high pitched whistle Mm. for some or even tangible vibrations for others, depending on where you are in this journey of spiritual expansion that you are all on in one way or another, and whether it is relevant for you to have such physical underlinings, so to speak, of such phenomena, which are often implemented in your version of reality to bring your attention to the fact that this holds something that is relevant for you. This is an event that you can choose to use in the expansion and the better getting to know yourself in general. That's what's being pointed out there by such sensations through, you could say, your higher self. 
Well, I, I just want our June and any of the Yael to know, because I don't want to forget, I'm open. So if you ever want to connect with me in any way and you deem me to be ready, whether in the dream state or the waking state, whether it's a craft or a literal physical-ish connection, I'm open. Oh, we know. And you've said so many, many, many times before. You even vocalized that. So it's always being received is what we're saying. So when a person even has that intent, we receive it. And when you're ready, you'll get it, but okay. not sooner and not later. <laughs> and this is often the pitfall. There's the insistence part again. People very often with the rational mind interfering on or in the beautiful play and joyful journey of following your highest excitement, your enthusiasm, very often insist, even if it's in secret and not consciously aware to themselves, that it may lead to a certain outcome. And this is why you mm. saw the ship on the highway, because you let go. You let go of your mm. insistence. You had your adventure. You had your intention. You had the setting, the space. You were open to receive, or so you thought. And it didn't actually appear until you left. And you were on the road again. And there it was. You were open to receive because you had said enough of the energy vibration for us to hear you loud and clear. And we're now speaking us in general, including those that you had a little encounter with in that moment through the witnessing of that ship. And then we, quote unquote, could connect with you because the field really opened up when the rational mind said, oh, well, not this time, maybe another. And there you had door opening. That is so good because it happened twice, exactly as you describe it. Most recently, my partner and I were in Arizona. We went to a contact work retreat. First night, I just wanted to go to sleep. I was tired. And when we retired, apparently all these craft appeared before the contact work even started. They captured it, pictures, videos. And there was a part of me who was like, mm, I can't believe I missed that. But oh well, I did. And then the next night, I had zero expectations when we were out in the desert doing the contact work. Rob and I sang to open up the proceedings. We sang about three songs to get the energy going. This gal then did these beautiful crystal bowls playing. And then all of a sudden, up over the mountains came these orange lights and a white craft. All the pictures they had taken the night before, same. It was the same connection. And I was, I was just beside myself that it was happening. And so I was very much let go. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. What about hybrid children? I'd like to talk about that a little bit. All right. How do I know if I have a hybrid child on Yael or another civilization? How does anyone know? Well, just to slightly course correct a sentence there. Yael is not the name of our planet. It's the name of our species. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah. nobody really has children on Yael, but you can have them amongst us for <laughs> sure. How would you know? You would know when you're ready to know, just as seeing the ships and just as creating for yourself and your version of reality, these type of encounters. It is something that only your heart can let you know is a reality in your multidimensional greater self, in the field of your multidimensional greater self, for it is a multidimensional extension, you could say. It is a reflection within the multidimensional field of your beingness when you have energetically or genetically been a donor to one of these children. And they are residing on a higher energy frequency realm. Now, usually, Parents of hybrid children have had often very tangible, visible dreams about giving birth or even felt for a while, also in their waking state, being pregnant, if this is regarding a woman in this case, and have given themselves throughout their lives often all types of hints that there may have been the co-creation with our species in a multidimensional manner 
leading to a new life in that way. So most of you have a breadcrumb trail to follow. And by diving into the memories that you suspect you may have had about this, and then going into conversation with your higher self, with your inner being regarding these incidents, which you can do in a meditative state, for instance, or by automatic writing, just writing out a dialogue between even if you ever had a dream of giving birth, you can start a conversation with the baby that was born then. Who are you? Was this just a dream? What does your heart tell you? What does your higher self tell you? What do you feel in your gut? This is very much an inner journey because all the answers are already within you. Now, we do sometimes in occasion with specific people that ask us directly, do I have high birth children? Give the answer yes or no. And if they ask how many, sometimes we can give them a number, an indication in that way. But sometimes we don't. And because you're asking in such a general manner in this particular conversation, we would emphasize, emphasize that you can access the information within yourself. And if it is relevant for you that more information follows, it will then come in divine timing. So in other words, a person who chooses to explore such fragments of memories that they may have of what they understand to be their past, when they choose to dive into those snippets, into those little moments a little deeper, sit with it, then let it go again, no insistence on the outcome or where it ought to lead you. They may then observe that in dreams to come or days to come, certain synchronicities begin to increase, certain symbols in the dreams become more obvious, certain hints that help fill in the blanks the questions that they were still walking around with may then be given to them or better said may then be allowed in by them because the information is readily available to you this is very much a journey of allowance allowing yourself to grow to the energy frequency that is what you would call ready that is perceptive to this that can use it in their day-to-day -day life in one way or another if only it brings a smile to your face every single moment you think of those little ones mm. or sometimes not so little anymore some are teenagers and some have grown up all together but still nonetheless children your children mm. wow all right i'll ask more specifically next time but thank you that's you're welcome and yeah. thank you mm. I have, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, we've got some questions, two questions from people submitted. And the first one is from Fei Chi. And she's All asking right. of Arjun, how do we switch from ego guidance mind to the divine guidance heart soul while calming the insecure ego along the way, coaching the ego to transition and grow along is interesting work. Otherwise, there are so many ramifications. The ego could either project so much fear to preserve itself, or it can turn into spiritual ego, etc. So to go back to her original question, let me see if I can help there. How do we switch from ego guidance to divine guidance while being calm? All right. Well, thank you. In a way, she already answered her own question with all the extension to that question, or she's at least with her sharing, showing that she has knowledge of in-between steps that are available to do this. So the idea is to remain present, to catch yourself in the moment of feeling whatever low vibrational energy may be revealing to you that there's an ego-based or fear-based definition or belief now at the heart of the matter that you're experiencing in your version of reality. Be present with that. Do not judge negatively or wipe off the table the energy frequency that you feel is soaring through your system in that moment be it anger bitterness sadness despair whatever it is that in that moment may create the impression that you're captured by an egoic state of being and we don't mean it in a negative sense we mean it more as a belief that originates from the rational mind where the rational mind has started to drive the car, hold the steering wheel 
in a manner as if it is in charge, where the rational mind has forgotten that what is actually steering the car, what is really running the show is the higher self. And that is the God connection, the knowingness, the remembrance of your connection to source, which is always there, but within which you can pretend that you're disconnected. That's how free you are. That's how loved you are. But you can pretend even that game. That's how free you are. So when you catch yourself in that lower vibrational state, the idea is, first of all, to acknowledge it for what it is. I'm feeling this way right now. I'm choosing better steps. That's already a step closer to your inner being. I'm choosing to feel this way right now. So that's the first step you can take. First, it will feel like I feel angry. And then you can move to, I'm choosing to feel angry. And just by inserting the word choice, you're self-empowering yourself right there. And you bring yourself a whole lot closer to the inner being of your essence. You bring yourself closer to your inner knowing. I'm choosing to feel mad. All right, I'm choosing to feel mad. Why am I choosing to feel mad? What am I choosing to believe is true that gives me the idea that I need to feel angry right now. And then see if you can start a little conversation with the rational mind, with the ego, if you wish to label it that way, and just ask it, why do you right now think we, quote unquote, in this co-creation should be feeling angry? And maybe the ego tells you, well, your rights are being offended or somebody else's rights are being offended. That might be the belief. All right, so that's what you're choosing to believe. So then you put the word choice in there. I'm choosing to believe such and such is true. But is it really true? And what does it mean if that is really true? What does it mean when you choose to believe your rights are being offended? What does that really mean? And then you can start to dissect and see how your dictionary is built up of all types of beliefs that may either serve you or not serve you. You can acknowledge, yes, you're being triggered. You may acknowledge that perhaps this is a good time to set some kind of boundary. This also may be an opportunity for you to learn to speak up. Do you feel you can speak up? Do you not believe that? It's the one or the other. You can ask yourself all these types of questions to see how your energy vibrational state is composed of all types of building blocks that you would call beliefs and definitions. And the better you get to know yourself in that, the easier it will then become to redefine. Okay, there's something that is occurring in my life right now that up until now I chose to feel angry about. But since I also am aware that in a state of anger, I don't make the best of decisions, or that's perhaps what the past has proven to me. I would rather, I prefer to be in a centered state so that I feel more together to then from that energy frequency, look at the whole situation again and see if I can make a better decision. How can I quote unquote, soothe myself into more of that centered state? And you can go into dialogue with the ego and or the rational mind, whatever you wish to call it, and dissect the belief that are at the heart of all of this and you can combine that with going outside moving a little bit having a walk going for a walk because when you change your environment it is easier to change your thought pattern everything is a symbol you're walking in a physical dream so if you allow yourself a grander picture of your surroundings and you allow yourself in your environment the visibility of a horizon you also metaphorically open your mind. So it gets easier to find a new perspective to something that bugs you very much. It's easier to find that when you also change around the surroundings for most people, rather than sitting on the couch and trying to solve the problem there and then, you see. So there's many tools, many permission slips. For some people, it helps to jog a little bit, to exercise, to work it out to sleep for a little bit, to really just surrender and park the entire idea for a moment, quote unquote, outside of them and then revisit it when they feel more rested. For some people, it just means they need to eat something or maybe they're hungry and they can't think or focus quite nicely when they feel they're not nourished 
enough. In that way, it is really always coming down to you getting to know yourself better, to see what is truly needed for you to soothe the rational mind into a greater perspective so that then you can choose a definition that actually serves you. And then you may come to more universal truths, such as whatever triggers me holds a gift for me. Whatever triggers me allows me to grow if I choose to grow from it. Whatever triggers me lets me know that there must be some type of a boundary here that I am actually pushing to the outer edges of my comfort zone. Do I feel safe within myself to go outside of that comfort zone? Can I allow myself to think out of the box that I have been conditioned into? Think of the world in? Can I find new definitions, new angles of perspective? Can I zoom out and see this from a higher point of view? And then the moment you find that any of these permission slips or all of them eventually work for you, faster and faster and more and more effortlessly, you will find yourself capable to walk that path and allow in more ease of mind, more clarity, and a stronger recognition of what is wisdom for you in that moment regarding the circumstances that you may have co-created to appear to be in your version of reality. Thank you on behalf of Fei Chi, great answer. And this next question is from Emmett. And Emmett yes. writes, Arjun, what is your opinion of Buddhism? Specifically, are there members of the Yayal that have achieved such profound spiritual liberation as to cease being reincarnated? All right. Well, there's an assumption there in that question, insinuating that when you reach a certain level spiritually, you no longer, quote unquote, have to be incarnated, but you always have a choice. You always have a choice. You can start the journey, quote unquote, linearly speaking, because start also immediately implies continuation and an end, beginning point, middle, ending, and so forth. But OK, just to put it into your vocabulary, you can start the journey as a human and have a human exploration, even though you are spirit having a human exploration in that way or experience in that moment, return, quote unquote, linearly speaking yet again to spirit, and then choose to continue that same theme in a different manner in an entirely different dimensional reality. It doesn't have to be earth again. So there is an assumption in Buddhism older textbooks that may be interpreted as if there is only one goal, which is to then outgrow or rise above of that cycle that is connected to your planet. But that cycle isn't pushed upon you. You're not caught in that, say, in what you might call a web that keeps pulling you in even against your will until you've learned a certain lesson. So the thing that we like about Buddhism, let's just put a little bit of attention there. And it's not just in Buddhism, it is also in many of your indigenous people's understanding of reality. It is in multiple spiritual paths, but it is most known by people in Buddhism is the holistic understanding of consciousness being within everything, everything being part of consciousness. The idea that even if you put a cup down on the table and it is next to a vase and there's a flower in the vase and how things are organized and the energy frequency with which you move that cup down to the table and put it down, the way you choose to move your body, to use your voice, all of these things, there's a really great awareness in some branches of Buddhism placed upon and underlining the idea of consciousness being in and within and through everything, as everything, of course, is held by consciousness. When the questioner asks us, if in our world there are individuals that have 
risen above the idea of the cycle of incarnation in our species, then we would say, well, no, not in the way that the question is being asked. Again, looping back to our first part of the answer, because there's nothing we feel we need to rise above of. And we can visit here again or stay away, quote unquote, if you would to put, like to put it that way, after having been incarnated here just once. It is free, it is free choice in this. Evolution is always occurring. Some people, humans, now again, looping back to your world, have evolved to a really high spiritual state and choose to incarnate again, nonetheless, to hold the space on the planet for uh, acceleration of the development of the species as a whole. Many of your, what you understand to be spiritual teachers were souls that came from that angle into your civilizations in order to bring a really profound high energy wavelength into your field of consciousness to help you, if you choose to, match that vibration by seeing that essence and recognizing it in yourself by realizing that I can observe this because it is part of me. I can even come up with this. I couldn't even come up with this if it wasn't part of me. So when you read the scripts of your Buddha or the stories about Jesus and his life or about Krishna or any other teacher that came with the intent to uplift the whole of the energy field, you can connect to these teachings in that manner if you choose to, but it always remains up to you. And it doesn't have to be connected to one or any of these spiritual paths. You may meet a person who has never even heard of the idea of metaphysics, who is fully and completely living from that state of being, who is what you might call enlightened and they don't know the term enlightenment themselves. So it's really a state of being more than anything else. The knowingness doesn't necessarily need words. It is more in the actions that it shows whether a person has reached, quote unquote, that state of energy vibration. Hmm. Okay. I have two final... Does that help? Yes. And I'm sure right. Emmett will love the answer because it's really fully fleshed out. And thank you. There was something for all of us in that. Oh, thank you. I have two final questions, Arjun. The first one is about our bodies and healing. Have things amped up energetically that are impacting our bodies? And for those of us who are living with some kind of pain or ongoing condition, is there meaning to that? And is there always a way out? Is there always a way out to fully heal and maybe even be better than before? All right. So. Let us begin with the last section of this question, and then you may repeat, if you wish, the first part. So you can make it two parts, but first to address the last part to begin with. So about pain, if there's meaning in that, and chronic pain specifically, you said. Right. Well, again, what you put in is what you get out. So you give the meaning. It is your version of reality. You can choose to put certain meaning into that, or you can choose not to. There's no inherent meaning subscribed to the phenomena onto itself. The pain, however, usually does carry a message. Now, how you choose to label it in meaningfulness is up to you, but the message often is that there is some form of resistance or friction or misalignment in the observation of the self or the world, which eventually is all one. So, if there's a strong resistance regarding the civilization of mankind and you consider yourself to be one of them, even though you don't think about that every day, but you despise all other human beings, if that would be a mindset. There is a chance, there is a chance, one of the many ways wherein that may reflect back to you, that type of a mindset or belief, maybe that a part of the body starts to ache and constantly bugs you to reflect back to you, there's something in your perception of reality that isn't really in alignment with who you truly understand yourself to be. 
Sometimes also it may push people, pain may, to find the outer edges of their belief systems and find new ways to look at themselves or work with the pain or look at resistance in general or their own physical awareness. There are as many reasons, although it may often be subconscious for those that have manifested these type of ideas into their version of reality, there are as many reasons as there are people who have manifested any type of chronic pain. And then there are some that choose to take, quote unquote, upon themselves, the idea of suffering in order to allow their surroundings to get to a certain state of awakening. There are some that get sick in a very challenging way to trigger, and we mean trigger as in every trigger holds a gift, trigger their surroundings, be it close family and friends or even society as a whole to show them that something relevant is playing out there. For instance, in your society, you are, particularly in the Western world, for many of you choosing to play, we are gonna call it, with your diets in ways that aren't necessarily always very natural anymore. And some of that may result in disease. And it is then, you could say, in a sense, also the physical body as being an extension of the earth, you are also all children of Gaia, speaking through an individual that on a soul level has chosen to be a messenger of this information for the collective, showing through that individual that certain compounds in your environment, be it dietary or pollution in any way, shape or form, aren't benefiting your species anymore. And so they are a type of messenger. Now, this type of taking upon yourself a message that is for the greater good, so to speak, will always overlap with a personal theme of exploration. So it is never just that. There will still be a reason within the individual soul to take such a path because it knows there is also for the carrier of the challenge, a gift that may be reaped from that. Perhaps you are aware of the book titled Dying to be me? No, I've never heard of it before. All right. Written by a woman who was in the hospital. Her body. Oh, contained... Anita Morjani. And absolutely. She's been on the show. Forgive yes. me. Anita Morjani. It's brilliant. She's amazing. Yes. 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 Her body contained tumors, the size of grapefruits, large. And she died. She died. She passed over or she had what you would call a near-death experience. But there was a flat line and then a reoccurrence of the heartbeat. And her journey is a wonderful example of why a soul might choose, even though the path was subconscious to the rational mind, previous to the actual near-death experience, but why a soul might choose to actually go that far in your physical dimension to play out the game of seeming limitation in a very physical manner because she has become a teacher. She has become an inspirational speaker. She has touched many, 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 many hearts. And when she quote unquote returned from her near death experience, the body rebalanced within days wow. and she was given up upon completely. Right. So there is one example and there are so, so many so many examples. If you start looking for this, you will find more. But there is a story available for every single person and every even tiny complaint that is sending you a message that is containing a possibility for growth, if relevant, for that person's personal journey and the surroundings. And the sudden, even so last minute that it comes down to a near-death experience, as you call it, timing of such a transformation may then have been the point of the journey because it was understood on a soul level how impactful that would be for anyone who would then later in time, quote unquote, observe that journey or that story. But even if it is, quote unquote, 
just anyone listening in who has a reoccurring pain in the neck that just won't go, the pain in the neck, as you would colloquially often say it, when something is bucking you as well, it may reveal to them that either perhaps they're afraid to look back at their past. Your body is also a symbol in many ways. You will find that the location of a certain complaint, often after it has healed, or when you have allowed yourself to realign into your natural state of being, reveals sometimes with a big wink and a smile why it was located in that specific part. When you catch yourself feeling pain or friction, or when you find that there is an expression of disbalance or dis ease in the physical body in that way you might choose to put your hands on it or just focus there and say thank you i am here with you i hear you instead of go away you shouldn't be here i am now incomplete this shouldn't be happening which is just more resistance you see so just as with the earlier answer where we gave some examples of in between stepping stones that you can choose to use to soothe your rational mind mm. into a higher vibrational state of being in the same way you can actually interact with the physical body and allow it stepping stones to find a state of more balance but again no insistence yeah it seems to be the theme today very powerful and as far as the beginning of that question, I just want to make sure I cover that too. Have things energetically accelerated so much for us earthlings and what's happening on the planet and otherwise um, into dimensions and so forth that it is having impact on the body? It can. So it's available to you to really tangibly become aware of that and to find yourself either capable of certain traits that you previously didn't think you had cool. mm -hmm. sometimes quite magical you mm -hmm. may find yourself with intent even being capable of almost intending yourself to be not noticed by others and walk in the streets invisible and have a little fun with that and that's what we mean by magical traits you can play with your conscious creatorship in a multi-dimensional manner it can allow you potentially if relevant for you to shift from a state of dis-ease that was there chronically or acute and well, what you would call heal yourself or realign yourself in a much more effortless way. This is a very potent time for those kind of things. It may really be quite world altering when it comes to the physical and your capabilities in that area. If you choose to believe that it may because it all starts with your allowing state of redefining those beliefs. And if you are, as we said before, allowing yourself to act on your highest enthusiasm in every given moment without pushing and pulling to the best of your ability and taking it no further without insisting as to where it ought to lead you while keeping a positive mindset on life in general, you may find that you are also inviting yourself to redefine previous beliefs and definitions that you used to have that were connected to the physical, your body or even the body of someone you love and so forth. And then things may shift in rather magical ways. You will allow yourself, better said, to shift to a version of Earth where that is already normal or incorporated, more of the norm in that sense more probable than it is now possible, better said. So you shift yourself to a new version of Earth in every single here and now moment, billions of times per second to be exact. But those versions of Earth may have different vibrations upon themselves and you're living in an overlap of many different versions of Earth. Your neighbor may be focused on a version of Earth that has a very, very different vibrational bandwidth than the one that you're focused in, same as with the answer regarding being able to, yes or no, observe the UFO, as you call them. And in that same way, you shift to versions of Earth that are the perfect reflection of the energy frequency you are choosing to embody in every single here and now. That energy frequency, as it is heightening your conscious awareness as you allow yourself to heighten your conscious awareness 
your conscious awareness of your energy frequency will become more conscious too. How you can use it, how you can direct it will become more of a tangible tool, will be more at your fingertips, more something that you can now get a handle on. And you may choose to use that in different ways. Play with that, experiment with that is what we would say, because there is no more powerful means of exploration than there is in play. Yes, yes to play. And the final question, Arjun, is about portals. We, yes. we hear a lot about portals and that there may be our power places we can go to access portals and so forth. I'm more curious about, can we create portals? Can we not have to go somewhere specific, but actually create a portal? And if so, is it possible to easily enter them? Would we know where we're going? What would all that be about? What are the possibilities there? Oh, the possibilities there are quite endless, literally. First of all, mm -hmm. that would be a very short answer, but that first of all, definitely endless, infinite possibilities there. Now, in a way you're already creating every single portal you ever encounter. You're moving, when you believe to be moving through time and space, what you're actually doing is moving through your own consciousness. So it is within you that you find the pyramids of Giza. It is within you that you find the Stonehenge circle in England. It is already all within you. And the energy frequency that you appear to be walking into as you enter these premises or these regions is the energy frequency that through your higher self allows you to receive the fragments of information that are relevant for you to receive through the idea of that permission slip of a portal. Now, there are portals on the face of your earth. There are portals, you could say, off the earth. There are portals, galactic portals, you might call them. Black holes are portals, to give you an example. There are portals in your oceans. The Bermuda Triangle is a pretty obvious one. Can you create one in your home is more kind of what you're asking? Um, home you or... To, or in your garden? Say? Yeah, anywhere. All right. Yeah. Yes, you can allow yourself to play again, 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 most powerful means of exploration, to play in such a manner that you create a temporal portal that you may then use in a way to, again, because there's always the fundamental point to get to know yourself better by. Well, this really very strongly comes down to your intent, your motivation, your reason as to why you would like to do this, with whom perhaps, because a co-creation would most definitely, in this case, amplify the results we see in such manners and matters. So we could take this many directions. Where would you like to go with this? Hmm. I would say mostly to, to utilize something like this safely, knowing I or anybody else could come back, but to be able to go someplace and have that experience, whether it is a meeting out in space somewhere or actually on another planet with another people. But I would find that really thrilling. To, and, you know, actually, as I'm saying it out loud, even the idea, it still blows my mind, multidimensionality and fractals and all of that. It's like a lot to ingest in your brain. But still, how cool would that be to be able to go spy on myself in some other timeline and check that out? Well, in a sense, that's already what you do when you sleep. Mm -hmm. Most of you, you astro travel, you you're all over the place, colloquially speaking, when you travel in your subconscious, in your greater self, even though it remains apparently hidden in the subconscious, but you can become more and more aware of that. And in fact, in that way, allowing yourself to remember your dreams or to train that muscle, so to speak, because it is something that you can learn and that you can train and nourish in yourself may help you get to these types of information. So this is the thing. When you have a desire to play with the idea of creating a portal, as you say, this is why it's so important 
to consider your motivation. Now, to just play without any insistence as to where it ought to lead you, obviously always will have some type of energetic impact on your beingness, even if the experiment fails, quote unquote, for the rational mind's point of view, and nobody disappears anywhere or comes back enlightened, then you could say still the game of this and playing it out in your physical reality may support a more conscious awareness of having actually such experiences whilst you're sleeping and in your dream time. You may have set a type of stage in the physical for something that you desire to become more aware of in the multidimensional you, you could say. So it will always, if this has your enthusiasm, function in one way or another, it will have a purpose, it may benefit you in that way. Just again, play no insistence and see then where it takes you. So many downloads there. Thank you so much to utilize in my life and our life. I am deeply grateful, as always, to you, Arjun, for coming, spending this time, sharing your wisdom, your humor, your toughness, all of that. It's just so beautifully received, and I really appreciate you. Likewise, we deeply appreciate every single encounter and chance for communication in this way. We send you all listening in and you to our unconditional love and wish you a magical continuation of your day. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> and while Vidika comes back, I just want to remind people that her URL to check <laughs> out to learn more is design for awareness dot com and again that is design and the number four i don't know if that's a good looking four but the number four awareness.com and we're going to end this with um just a few questions to her and just to remind you subscribe to the show click on subscribe i do read all your comments this is your number one weekly transformation conversation. My guest next week is Lisa Broderick. She's gonna be talking about how everything we believe about time is not real, how we can actually control time to our benefit and become the masters of our experience of time. Very much looking forward to that. And uh, Vidika, welcome back. Um, how are you doing? I'm okay, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for your willingness to step aside and let our June come through. That was truly spectacular. And oh, powerful. thank you for <clears throat> building the, setting the stage for this and um, allowing it to manifest in this way. I, I really, uh, it's always very tangible for me to feel their um, joy and excitement around these type of co-creations. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Joy, because we <laughs> talked about joy hunting. So, so great that you would bring up the joy. <laughs> And I want to just offer it to you to let us know, you mentioned earlier a channeling class. Um, will you talk about any online events or otherwise that you're offering ways that we can further engage with you? Uh, I'm just in this very beginning stages of, um, uh, I just found a person who is going to help me build the online um, platform for this to, to take place on. Uh, but I've been practicing kind of in secret <laughs> with a bunch of people just sharing with them all the possible tools that I use to make this type of connection and well how through my own life I've experienced which things assisted me in that and which ones were challenging um well gathered all that information over well a year and a half pretty much when when um when uh, COVID started uh, I started diving into this with a select group of people and um, really kind of to test for myself to see if that could become a course, an online course. Uh, Cause I just wanted to know how people responded to the methodologies that I offer. And if that would, you know, if, if it made sense, what the reflections would be, what questions would come up uh, and so on. And um, I feel that um, I have enough information to start building an online workshop for people to learn how to channel um, if they want to. Um, so I'm in the beginning stages of building that and 
<coughs> sorry, my throat is still coming back <laughs> to my normal <laughs> voice. Um, and um, um, yes, this is in the making. When that becomes available, I will share it in my newsletter. So I think the fastest route of um, getting informed with this when it's sure. done would be, uh, well, sign up for newsletters, what I would say. Maybe you can leave a link beneath the YouTube video or make it easier for people. Um, and then um, I will announce it when it's ready. And I'm thinking to make a three level course. Uh, so a part one or level one, level two, or beginner, intermediate, and you know, maybe you could even call it professional. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm looking into that and I'm starting to allow this to come into realization. Yes. <laughs> yes, beautiful. Yes, absolutely. I will include a link, the designforawareness.com, so folks can sign up for your newsletter and be aware of all the things you're offering down the road. I'm including, you've got some amazing free videos too. I'm sure they'd like to be cognizant of. And yes. anything here at the end, Vidika, that you would like to share with the listeners? Um, just that I am so grateful and honored to have been on your show again, Debbie, and to have been offered um, a platform to share these type of co-creations on, because I also personally believe that this is the time. It's, it's a wonderful time. It's a very potent time to um, dive deeper into what we're curious about, uh, particularly when it comes to multidimensionality, because, okay, this is my personal opinion, but I think when our physical reality looks challenging, and full of plot twists and crazy twists and turns, um, particularly then, um, the power of bringing in your greater awareness is such a wonderful tool. So I feel honored that I get to share this, that I got to share this today here with all of you. And yeah, I hope it assisted you in one way or another. Um, and if not, then I'm sure that there is something else out there that will for you. I am fully confident of that because I believe there is something like this for everyone. Mm. Well, for me, uh, this was beyond divine and I already know how it's gonna impact people. This was just so brilliant and it's so funny answering all these questions, which is so good and powerful. And there was really a theme that emerged still all it does is generate for me more questions. So I'm sure there'll be a fourth installment. But for now, folks, really enjoy this one. And there'll be some of you who will watch this several times because there's so much to get out of it. I'm going to end today's show with this quote from Etty Hillisum. Ultimately, we have just one moral duty to reclaim large areas of peace in ourselves, more and more peace, and to reflect it towards others. And the more peace there is in us, the more peace there will also be in our troubled world. Thank you so much for joining us today. And that also unexpectedly is part of the theme. So I love that. What we are is what we put out, is what we create and what we experience. Remember that in your dreams and so much of what Arjun said to us today was really follow your bliss, basically. Follow your passion, your love, your excitement, your enthusiasm, which has Theo or God in it, because that is what will ultimately create you into being the kind of being that this planet really requires right now. And I can't think of any better way to get there. Remember to dare to dream and dare to turn all your dreams into your reality. Thanks for being with us today.